I hadn't really thought about an intro necessarily, other than maybe talking about, like, the distinction of, you know, being versus doing, kind of, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, like, my misconception of, like, wordlessness. Ooh, let's let's do that, because I just had, like, an epiphany about being versus doing, too. Okay. So, share your story. Um, I guess mine's not so much a story. It was more, I don't know if you recall, I apologize, like, to listeners, because this is so much of, like, Martha stuff and, like, my experience during the coaching process, um, but the, I had, we had a call with Martha, and it was the first Q&A, and so, I had just finished kind of going through this book of, um, you know, like finding my way in a wild new world. And then I wanted to make sure like I mastered these concepts. Like I'm so much of like a perfectionist, like before I continue, I need to make sure that I have this part like very well, like established. And that was my problem with wordlessness is that I felt, I always have this issue of, like, not doing it right. Like, how do I know for sure? Kind of that game that I play with myself. And um, I remember, like, writing in a panic, like, Martha, I've been meditating, and I can only get to wordlessness, like, after 15 minutes, and I don't know if this is really wordlessness because especially the way she phrases it in this book she you know she talks about dropping into wordlessness mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's what i got caught up on mm-hmm. because it was like oh snap and i'm in wordlessness and to me it doesn't work that quickly mm-hmm. at least not yet and so that was where my frustration was coming from and so you know i i wrote that to her and she kind of addressed it and she kind of she just laughed it off she's like are you kidding you know like today it took me 50 five, zero, like 50 minutes to get into wordlessness and stuff and so that kind of helped me take a deep breath and I was like okay you know like this this is more like this is simpler than what I'm making it kind of a thing like I'm making it have to feel like this and I'm making it have to be like this when that's distracting me from it more than exactly. anything. Yeah. So that was kind of my misconception of like that there is this like, and there is this awe around it, but it's not, it's not like this big fancy thing. So describe it now that it's not fancy. What is it now for you? It's being still and like my eyes wide open kind oh, of. I love how you just described that. Yes. So it's, no. like, it's like drenching your senses in what's happening right now, mm-hmm. right? So it's mm-hmm. not even like, and, and what comes to mind for me is the idea of someone on a pillow in Nirvana, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, <laughs> that's where I was going with this difference between being and doing. I thought, well, I'm such a doer, right? I'm such an achiever that I have to stop achieving. I have to stop doing and just be, right? But yeah. it ended up being for me that it was how I was being in my doing. And so now I'm being so much more. And I actually had this real life example of dropping into world wordlessness that's a hard word for me to say like just this afternoon so I was under a tree that is not one of my normal trees so it was an um a stranger tree Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I was under this stranger tree and just sort of you know I was actually reading this book and making little notes and then all of a sudden these drops of green gooeyness drop from the tree so this is so weird to say but I looked at it and go oh I wonder what that is and I started to examine it and then I started to look up in the tree and then I just started to like literally laugh at myself I'm like 
I was just curious. I was just curious right then. When I imagine myself, sort of the before wordlessness and after wordlessness version, the before wordlessness version would have gone, Oh my god, something just fell at me! Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> and then like running for cover, yeah. right? So totally like running into a, a, a previous story and making it awful. And instead, I was really just like, Huh... What is that? Just this is like really weird curiosity. And then I thought I really need to wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I I personally have experienced wordlessness as being in my doing. Um so it's this state, this this um and I the note that I wrote is that it's actually because the other thing that I hear a lot from folks is that I have to get rid of my thoughts. Like it's like almost like you're going to push your thoughts away. And what mm -hmm. I wrote down is that it's not an absence of noise or thoughts, but instead it's a peace within that. And that relates all the way back to exactly what you said. It's not this fancy thing that you're chasing. It's already within you and you're just allowing it. To surface. Mm -hmm. I totally, when you were describing the gooeyness, like just had to giggle too, because I think that's the, the simplicity of it all is what's so amazing. Um, last week I went for a walk in the woods and I was, you know, contemplating this, but also just like, I'm just going to like whatever, have fun on the walk. And like, there's nothing I need to do or need, not need to do kind of. And I remember like I was walking on the path and I looked to my left and I, to me right now, I can't even quite remember what the image was, but I just remember like looking at like the greenery and like the trees and stuff. And I kind of like saw it from a different angle and distance that it was kind of like, I know I'm in where this right uh, with left. <gasps> Yeah, that is a hard word to say. Why do we even need to say that? Yeah. <laughs> Wordlessness. Let's, let's call it peace. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. yeah, it's a long word. But I could see kind of like my thoughts coming through like, oh, I'm acknowledging this right now. Oh, this is like feels like a movie. Oh, and so the thoughts and stuff make it like I'm still here. This is still reality. Like the thoughts <laughs> didn't go away. Right. But it still so beautiful in right. it <gasps> yes it's just so beautiful in it and ah oh, that reminds me of something I like underlined in here I have to go to it because that so there's a quote in the path of delight that says um the state of wordlessness delivers you immediately to your ultimate goal, which is peace of mind and body, gratitude of the present moment, joy in living. I th that that is life being born, kind of. That's it. It's 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 the magic of. It's just magic being born. Does that make sense? Like, you were connected to it. So you were in it. And that's that's the difference between life and living. Mm-hmm. There's not... Yeah. I don't know why. This, like, quote just popped in my head from Bob Marley. When, and I'm, I'm so... Quotes, I'm always par paraphrasing. They're never as is. But... His idea was that some people feel the rain and others get wet. Ooh. You know, it's yeah. that idea yeah. of, like, that appreciation and awareness. Like, oh, I'm running from the rain. I don't want to get wet, kind of. Or you can just kind of, like, look up to the sky and just, ah. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess that's, too, what you're saying of, like, every moment you have that possibility of making magic. Yes, and, it, and and I think it connects back to what a lot of us do is exactly what, what you said, and, and I found myself 
doing a lot in the past is am I doing this thing right instead of mm -hmm. instead of just experiencing it and finding my own understanding of it so wordlessness um I the, the thing I like about wordlessness is that it gets rid of the idea of language and if there is no word then we are finding the meaning in our sensations in our mm -hmm. body, um, in our emotions. Like, we're not going to some on-sale rack, clearance rack of, of what this means. And instead, we're, like, experiencing it right then as new. Sort of that idea of being... Um, the that student. was trippy for me, too. That idea of, like... The language and the education part of things, because <laughs> having been, you know, like studying a language, like for my Ooh, degree, yeah. you know, it's like, but this language like opened up a whole nother realm of understanding and like a different way of understanding things. And I was like, it, no, like I was so like, I was, didn't want to believe that right away. And so I almost had like, I had to recognize that attachment to words you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't know. And Martha goes on to explain kind of like twofold that like words are beneficial. Obviously, they're not the devil, yeah. <laughs> but it, like that idea of education, too. And, and the whole learning process is different. Like okay. this, the, the idea of wordlessness versus the traditional path. Yeah, because it's learning through experience it's touching it and feeling it and letting it move through your experience um, and seeing through the eyes of your heart like you said like awake like seeing it through the eyes of your heart instead of through our logic and through our head but really integrating that gut instinct and this heart-centered knowing, I think that, 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 that sounds true. Like, there's a difference between learning and knowing because you've experienced something. It's kind of mm -hmm. like trying to describe the letter, the, the color blue, or describe the taste of ice cream to someone who's never tasted it. Or do you even give ourselves a label, right? I want to become a blank instead of being that mm -hmm. thing. Whew. That felt really heavy all of a sudden. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I know I'm just sitting here nodding my head. I can't, like, words aren't coming out. It's just. Yeah, and this wordlessness is really kind of grounding in that being yeah ownership of it yep well um martha talks about three ways wayfinders go to wordlessness and we just talked about sort of stillness and meditation but we also talked about like movement and doing it doesn't have to be stillness i think that's what you and i both experienced and um, and then there's torment, which just sounds weird to say, torment. And then the, yeah. the path of delight. I just I'm smirking right now because I'm just realizing I've been tormenting myself, and it's in more in a playful way. It, it, you know, it sounds like torment, ugh, like this scary grudgery almost. But you can do it on a very naive level too which I just realized I'm doing mm -hmm. like I've been tormenting myself in terms of like when I was reading these books and we had to you know like the technique for dropping into wordlessness like I said I want to master this first thing before I move on so I literally tormented myself and I don't know which one it was what is it it's that path of pulling your senses into open focus mm -hmm. and of where you look at one thing and like let your peripheral vision expand and then that's yeah. it. I was sitting here in my room staring at this white closet 
And I was like getting irritated at myself. Like, <laughs> I know I've done this before. Like, uh, like I've, I was tormenting myself into this path. And then now I'm realizing the other day when I went on that walk in the woods, I came across a bridge and I was peering into the water and I looked at the bottom. It was clear enough where you could see the rocks Ooh, at the bottom. Yeah. And I was just looking at how pretty it was. And then instantly, I didn't try to do it. I just noticed my reflection. Mm-hmm. And then I had that light bulb moment like, oh, like I am opening focus. Like this is that stillness. Like it doesn't have to be this like sit still and quiet in your room and look for it. You know, like I was out doing and moving and then it's when it came to me yes. because I've been to it. Or came back or allowed or came through because because it's never gone. And it's almost like the idea of water. Like it just needs to be still enough to see through. And water can water, you know, bodies of water move. But if we're not stirring them around, then we can see through that water. Like you can see down to the bottom of it. Mhm. Yeah. So um so we can torment ourselves or we can be pushed into torment. Um, this is where I, I thought that it would be beneficial to talk about how I dropped into wordlessness when I was hit by a car. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just this big old smack on the side of the head, right? But um, physically walking across the street, I was hit by a car and... You know, the, the movies and the books that are the, the, the retelling of the stories that you see are, are pretty much on par. Like, time stopped. And so, so for me, it happened between the impact of the car, and it must have been while I was, like, moving through space, and before I landed on the street and opened my eyes to people, like, worried, right? So in that time span, who's, who knows, maybe it was 2.5 seconds. I didn't go very high, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but what happened is first that whole movie of, of everything, but only the exchanges of love. Only the exchanges of um, the last exchange with anyone, anyone like really close to me, anyone I had sort of touched, I felt like came to my mind and I remembered the last word the last gesture whatever it was and then what was beautiful is that I dropped or I dissolved which is where I think this dropping into wordlessness this idea and 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 the only way I can give it meaning is to give it language but it's not like this at all if that makes sense but what seemed to happen is that there was this dissolving and I would equate it to the the word forgiveness like there was this washing away of anything that was heavy anything at all that was heavy and I was so light and so expansive that I was everywhere and there was nothing but I was everything it was like it was it's it's what I imagine the idea of not the idea, but it's what peace feels like in my mind now, even though I experienced it then. Um, your bird is back, Sarah. That's so cool. I was just listening to you. <gasps> so, um, so that's what happened. And for me, immediately after that, and I think when... when it's like childbirth. You forget about the pain, just like. So in so I remember childbirth was difficult, but I don't remember the pain. And now, I remember how beautiful that was. But I, it's tough for me because I just kind of wanna. Wanna reach for it, because it was. Just so amazing. And and now I'm in the world, <laughs> so and this is cool too. <laughs> But, um, wow. 
so that idea of torment is this innocent, like you said, this naive torment, or it can be a very painful occurrence that opens a window for you, that despite that pain or that incident, like you don't hold on to it and it allows you to break open instead of break apart. I had never pictured um, or been able to visualize pain or torment in that way until reading this idea of kind of that having a, a flower bud. You know, the bud is so tight and that's part, like the challenge, if you will, or like that difficulty that you have to get through until you're able to kind of bloom and, and feel free and then, like, show that beauty to the world. Mm. And that's that's kind of what your story reminded me of right now. In, in a dissociated way, kind of. Well, I think what brings what that brings out in me is this idea that we have to do something. And it's not, there's nothing for us to do. Like, it's, it's exactly what we said earlier. It's just for us to be, and it'll naturally, if we surrender, it will naturally happen. And that's really tough, because that doesn't mean we don't take, in, in my language, it's called inspired action, action. So love being human is always this movement of your soul um, towards love, which is truth. Um, so there's always this doing, but there's never this sort of, labor in effort and I think that's what the flower does you know the flower just naturally blooms Mm -hmm. we didn't have to think about going through adolescence right we didn't have to think about our bones growing or our hair growing that happens and I think the unfolding of our soul happens in the same way That sounded so pretty, the unfolding of our soul. That's cool. (laughs) It was. I don't know, I like that. Yeah. (sighs) I'm having a hard time. I'm not going to say I'm having a hard time. I'm being distracted by the beauty of the clouds. And I so, see them in, your, in my reflection, or in the window uh-huh. behind you. Oh, do you? And it was funny. I was just playing around with that. I was like, oh, that one looks like a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the bird fly? No, I didn't you see didn't? that. You didn't? I was, like, watching him as I was like... Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that actually, you and I have talked about how... I think we've talked about how this is juicy and how we want to talk about the path of delight. And I think the path of delight is the least talked about, the least sort of, the least worn path towards um, wordlessness. Because it's just, because it takes training, to be honest. I mean, we have this natural instinct to react to noises and fear and you know this turmoil this messiness that's happening whereas the path of delight is this intention to focus more on calm and more on comfort and Just what brings us joy. Just what naturally lights us up. Yeah, and I almost think, like, it, you know, this path of delight is more natural. But we've been trained against it. Oh, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. I think that society, in terms of being productive and effective and efficient, we have this idea that work hard, play hard. They're two separate things. 
and we've lost that connection that these two worlds can mesh and maybe should, you know? Yeah. And when it meshes, there is no time in your doing. There's no effort in your doing because you're being. And I think um, that's what some folks call a state of flow. Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing. You're definitely doing something. But there's no effort in it. I think... Why do I keep saying I think? We... What you said about being socialized is like, you know, that's why, you know, to play and to see the world like a child because we used to, because we knew how, and then we were taught not to. Mm -hmm. And I think many people are resistant to it now because the outcome might seem unknown and maybe not worth it. You know, I don't know. That's, I am so much, I wouldn't say completely type A personality, but in terms of my schooling and education, the way I was brought up, I was definitely a doer in order to accomplish something, kind of reach the end goal, instead of kind of appreciating the process you know, throughout. And so that's something I constantly have to like bring myself back to almost, you know, and, and just kind of accepting that delight. You know, sometimes it's hard to accept it. And we're so stubborn, aren't we? I know. I have an experience like that. So I had this idea that finishing my degree would give me something, that I would become something once I had a degree. And um, so I walk across the stage, you know, go through the whole ceremony and nothing. I'm like, you know what? Kind of like you. I'm like, I just didn't do it right. I just didn't do it right. Let me just do it again because I, I, I'm going to get it right because something happens when you do this. So I got a master's degree. <laughs> and I was like, you know, and I had a little more fun with my master's degree. I mean, I had fun with my undergrad, but it was very sort of achievement to get it done within this time. You know, don't take any time off, take a full load, make it happen. I had a little more fun with my master's. Um, but still, walked across the stage and was like, I, it's this close. I know it is. It's this close. And the funny thing is, the funny thing on the way to the, there's some, some phrase that reminds me of that. A funny thing happened on the way to the, is it theater? I, I mean, anyway, total law. So, so for my doctorate, I totally was immersed in it. There was, there was no end to it. There was no end to it. I mean, I finished all the coursework, and I was like, darn, I'm done with the coursework, darn. And then I started with, <laughs> seriously, and then I started with my dissertation, and I, and I was immersed. I mean, I had what David called the war room, and yeah. Huh? Oh, that sounds <laughs> I'd walk in, and time would disappear. The walls, stacks of papers, I mean, piles of books. It was so much fun. And I never wanted to be done. I never wanted to finish. And, of course, society and, you know, my advisor and my tuition bills. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and it just came to a point where I had to decide, am I going to stay ABD or am I going to finish it? And I finished it. But it was interesting because um, they asked us to write 50 words that would be um, narrated as we walk the stage. And I wrote exactly 50 words. And what they basically said is, I've done this, but I'm turning to you. So I had this beautiful phrase that I wrote that was just basically like, 
Even though I'm crossing the stage, it's not done. It's just beginning. And in that moment, I felt like I got what I needed from it. And it was no longer about society or the achievement or the letters or the quality of my research and all those other things that I, you know, sort of swam in before. Mm -hmm. But I was like, this is just the beginning for me. Because the more I learned about that topic, the more I realized I didn't know. And it was this never-ending sort of experience. Instead of a quest for something, to find something, to do something, it was just an experience. Mm 